What's going on, everybody? This is Maximilian. I'm back after a while. I know. I apologize. I kind of uh, wasn't feeling well on Thursday. Just really didn't want to get sick over the weekend because, you know, that would really suck. So I just, you know, took it easy, went to bed really super early, and I just kind of took the weekend off. So I'm bringing you guys a super duper extra long, super special, spectacular, extended extravaganza bravado episode. Whatever you want to call it, it's a long one. A very long episode. And I'm praying that YouTube will let me upload something that's this long, but we're going to find out. So, we got a 20-minute Pokemon episode, and really, there wasn't any other way that I could do this. Because if I were to cut it up into two sections, it would have been abnormally short, to say the least. And honestly, it's just much easier to get through it in one single try. So, bear with me. I promise I'm not going to do one this long again. At least for this foreseeable future. So, yeah. Hopefully it's not too long for you guys, but then again, that's more of Maximilian. And isn't that more of what you love and enjoy? I mean, can't have too much of a good thing, right? Eh. Oh, wait. Yeah, you can. All right. Never mind. Forget I said that. You're going to enjoy it, because it's 20 minutes of Maximilian. So, seeing as how this is an extra long episode, I figure I'd start off with a couple of things before I actually get into what I want to talk about. Because really, this is just going through the ice cave and fighting a bunch of trainers and me just level grinding a little bit which did kind of add to the length of the video, and I apologize for that, but we really need to be ready for the Elite Four, so I'm just trying to get as prepped as possible. So, here's my little plug. Go ahead and check the description, and you'll find a link, number one, from my Twitter account. I'm in the process of purchasing an Xbox 360 power adapter, finally. I know, I'm just getting around to it, but I've been so incredibly busy over the last month or so that I just really haven't had time to get on Xbox. And... It's just been ridiculous. I'm not sure when I'm going to be getting on, but I can tell you this. During the school year, I play a ton. And I mean a ton of Xbox. Like, probably more than any human being ever probably should. So, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, I'll let you know what's going on on Xbox Live when I'm hopping on Call of Duty, because Modern Warfare 3 is coming out in November. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah, I'm coming out in the school year, and I'm going to be playing that a lot. Probably way too much. So you guys should join me while I play it way too much. Because everyone knows that playing in parties in Modern Warfare is just way more fun than playing by yourself. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can keep up with what's going on. And if your sub box just kind of poops out on you for some reason, because I know sometimes they do, I will post all the links to the videos that I upload to YouTube on Twitter as well, just in case you miss something, or if you want to be there to comment first on it and be that person that everybody pokes fun at because you commented first. Yeah, I know. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter if you would. If you don't use Twitter, I don't really care, but hey, it would help you, now wouldn't it? Go ahead and make a Twitter account and follow me. Yeah! Number two, you'll also find a link to uh, Mitch's channel. And he just got back actually from a camping trip and going through New Mexico. So he is, um, he's back uploading videos again. He's the guy who made my background for my channel and the intro for my videos. Really awesome guy. If you haven't heard any of his commentaries yet, or if you enjoy Call of Duty at all, go ahead and go over to his channel and sub him up because that guy is awesome. And I got to tell you, he has got some really insane graphic talent. So go ahead and check out his stuff. It's a really cool guy. All right, end of the plug. So, that only took, what, about three and a half minutes? Man, we are not even close to being done with this video. So, let's get right into the topic. I kind of wanted to talk to you guys today about how I chose the college I went to and what my college life is kind of like right now. So, I would imagine that most of you are at least somewhat into the uh, middle school to high school demographic. And um, so this is what I'm guessing. Some of you might be older, but I'm trying to get to the majority of my audience here. And if not, then... Hey, it's an interesting story. You know, get to know a little bit more about me and my life. So, here's how things went down. Um, when I was in um, in high school, I actually had transferred out of a public or a private school, sorry, back into public school around uh, I think tenth grade or so. And uh, what ended up happening was, for whatever reason, the uh, public school that I went to wouldn't take any of the incoming credits that I had at my private school. So I basically had to take high school in three years. Which was okay. I mean, I had to repeat my sophomore year, but since I had skipped second grade back in elementary school, it basically put me on track to graduate with my normal class. So it wasn't that big of a deal. And in all honesty, high school was a piece of cake. Like, I know, like, sometimes you get those teachers in those classes that are just really annoying and really hard, and you always get the people that are just out to get you. It happens to everybody. But for the most part, high school was just easy. Like, I basically had to do no work whatsoever. I had all the free time I ever wanted, and it was just... I don't know. The easiest way to describe it was just a complete cakewalk, because compared to college, it was just so unbelievably easy. Anywho, I was looking at a couple of colleges, because I knew right away when I was going into high school that I wanted to get into computer science. 
So that really helped me out a lot in narrowing my colleges down. Because a lot of kids who are in high school these days usually don't know what they want to major in yet, which is normal, to say the least, because like most people really don't declare a major until probably their sophomore or junior year in college. Um, it's, it's just the way it happens. You may need a little bit more time to actually figure out what it is that you want to do. Some people know exactly what they're going to do right from the get-go. And by the way, how did Gust hit me when I was flying? That was a new one on me. Anywho, random aside. So, I knew I wanted to get into computer science. So I kind of narrowed down my options. I knew that I wanted to get a good school that was um, reputable for their um, sciences and engineering. And I just wanted to get something that hopefully wasn't too expensive because I've got three siblings and they're all planning on going to college too. So we're trying to lessen the burden on my uh, financial burden on my parents as much as possible. So I essentially narrowed it down to three options. I looked at Missouri S&T, which is the university I'm attending right now. That's the one I ended up choosing. I also looked at Purdue and Mm, excuse me, Belch, uh, the Milwaukee School of Engineering. You guys probably haven't heard of MSOE because it is very, very small, and it's in, a, it's in a giant complex building in downtown Milwaukee. It's very isolated. So it's not one of the bigger schools per se, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard of Purdue. So I went to go visit each of these schools because, uh, you know, one of the best ways to actually get a feel for what kind of school you want to attend is to actually go see the campus because you really don't want to just pick a school blindly having not seen the campus yet. Because I'll tell you so much about what goes on there, like the campus life, uh, the size of the classes you're going to be attending, what's going on over there, because you should base uh, your decision on a college so much more than just the, um, the their pedigree as well as their class structure and their class size, because, I mean, those are great things to consider, but if you're not going to enjoy yourself at college, then it's just not worth it. So I, w I would definitely recommend that if any of you guys are visiting colleges right now or planning on going to college, you need to go actually visit the campuses you're looking at. That's definitely the best way to actually figure out where you should be going, where you belong, and it actually greatly influenced my decision a lot. So, I went to um, Missouri S&T first, because I actually happen to have a couple of friends that go there, and it's only about an 80-minute drive from my house. It's not too far away. So, I went over there. The campus is kind of small, especially compared to most of the major American colleges. It's about 7,500 students total. So if you want to think about it, it's about the size of two or three really large high schools. So it's not terribly big, but it's still a sizable college. I mean, it's not like a community college or a technical college or anything like that. It's still a university. So um, it's a small campus. There's really not a whole lot in there. It's essentially a town that's built around a college, really, because Rolla is a really, really small city in the middle of Missouri. But um, the class sizes were small, so it was very good. I knew that I was going to be getting a lot of, um, I guess... Uh, hands-on, one-on-one education, because it's a lot easier to learn when you can actually talk to the professor easily than when you have to sit in a giant lecture hall full of hundreds of people. You just feel kind of distant and uh, disconnected. So I knew that was a good thing going for me. Plus, I also knew that their computer science program was very reputable. I mean, they're one of the best engineering schools in the nation, and they are pretty much dominate the Midwest region for a lot of different engineering disciplines. So that was one of the other big reasons for me, too, because I knew they had a good pedigree. And since they're in-state, I could get a fairly good tuition rate on it, so it had a lot of good things going for it. The campus really isn't all that great. I mean, compared to most uh, most of the larger campuses, like um, some of the other universities I've been to are um, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and Purdue. Um, they uh, they have really extravagant, beautiful, enormous campuses, but that's because they have like thirty or forty thousand students going there. Um, there's obviously not a whole lot to do on campus at Rolla, but it had, a, it had a great bunch of people that I knew because I knew a lot of people coming from high school. I knew a lot of people already there from my community, even those who didn't go to my high school. So it was nice to know that I actually have a social environment to actually just step into without having, having to try. So that was also something I really considered a lot. If you have friends that you know that are already going to the college that you're looking at, it might be a good idea to look at that one and consider it a little more heavily. Because um, when you're all alone for the first time, when you're in your first semester of college, you can get... Um, you can get some strange feelings, like homesickness is one that comes to mind. It never really happened to me. I just enjoyed it so much. It's like, it's a lot of fun. So you may just completely forget about home altogether. But blending into a new social environment, just completely new with nobody to lean on, can be a little bit difficult for some people. So I'd recommend that if any of you guys are looking at colleges, try and find at least a friend or two that you know who's also going there, because that can really help you transition into a college lifestyle. Like, after your first freshman semester, it gets really easy. You can basically do whatever you want. You can meet a bunch of, you'll meet a bunch of new people. You'll develop a lot of connections. 
You'll know where all the college hangouts are, where everybody goes on the weekends, things like that. And your first semester is basically you adjusting to the new lifestyle, but after that, it's just super fun times all downhill from there. So that was something that also really um, really impacted my decision for going to Missouri S&T. Now, the other two universities, uh, Purdue was awesome. I went there on a actually a fairly hot day in April. It was towards the end of the semester, but it wasn't quite at that point where they were in dead week. And for those of you who aren't in college yet, dead week is essentially the week or possibly even two weeks before finals where the professors essentially don't teach anything new and people are just stuck inside their dorms and apartments and fraternity houses all day just studying for finals for the, the entire week or two weeks. Hence why it's called dead week, because the campus is basically a ghost town. So I got there just before dead week, which means everybody was out partying. All the frats were out grilling, playing lawn games. There was a giant campus tour going on. The whole campus looked amazing. I l really loved Purdue. Like, Purdue is a very great school, and I was seriously considering it. Basically, the only reason why I didn't attend Purdue was the price tag. Like, I just couldn't afford it. Even with the financial aid that I knew I'd be guaranteed based on my grades and my um, testing scores, I'd still pay about twenty-five grand a year to attend a out-of-state college, and that's just I just can't do that. And my, car my parents could not do that either, which means I'd have to take out student loans, and I really, really did not want to take out student loans because I figured I could get enough financial aid to pay for at least a large part or maybe even a majority of my college tuition and expenses. So I just basically kind of threw that one out immediately because it's just like that's just way too much money. I can't do that. So if it had not been for the gigant gargantuan price tag, then uh, who knows? I may be at Purdue right now, but... I just had to pass up on it. I couldn't do it. And then I went to visit Milwaukee School of Engineering, which is um, not quite as expensive as Purdue, even though it is out of state. It's a private school, so it is hard to get into. And they do have uh, quite a reputation for producing some very fine students that have come out of their university. Um, but the biggest thing for me that just completely killed it for me, like right off the bat, as soon as I got there, I knew I would hate it. And the reason why is because there's, there's nothing there. I mean, you're in the middle of downtown Milwaukee, which is kind of nice, but the social life there is just non-existent. I mean, they have basically nothing. They have one dorm complex, the classes building, and that's it. Like, there's you're just surrounded by skyscrapers. There's really no campus to go. You have to go through city to do anywhere, or to do anything. Sorry. Um, the people there were um, a very reserved, um, kind of shy and timid, which is kind of what I expected because, I mean, these are basically people who are going to college solely to get a degree. I mean, they weren't going to mess around or anything like that. And, I mean, messing around is, like, I don't condone, like, doing stupid stuff at college. But, I mean, you need some time to goof off. Otherwise, the stress will just get to you. That's just, you know, a fact of life. So I could tell right away that I just would not enjoy the atmosphere there. It was just very dull, boring, just so confined to um, scholarly activities that I just, I just did not like it at all. And I didn't want to go there. And plus, uh, Milwaukee is kind of far away. It's even farther away than Purdue, actually. It's about a six-and-a-half-hour drive from where I live. So if I ever wanted to go home, I mean, I didn't have a car at the time, so basically my, any, if I had to go home, my parents would have to drive out to Milwaukee, pick me up, and then go back to St. Louis, which is a 13-hour round trip. And uh, just can't do that. It's just completely unmanageable. Whereas if I went to Purdue or Rolla, I could possibly do that in a day, or I could find a friend who's coming home to St. Louis to ride with. I didn't know anybody going into MSOE, so it would have made it very difficult to actually establish some kind of a carpool there. So that one was a very easy throw out. So all in all, I ended up choosing Missouri S&T. And it actually worked out quite well, because I ended up um, I ended up qualifying for their Chancellor Scholarship, which I had to go through um, a bunch of different processes. I had to um, actually write an essay to uh, get into the finalists group. They uh, give it to, I think... 200 or something people, like 250 people actually qualify for it. You have to be in like the top 5% of your graduating class to qualify. And then if you apply for it, they take your essay and critique it, and they narrow it down to about 100. So just under 50% of the people who submitted it ended up um, qualifying as finalists. Then all 100 finalists had to go through a panel of judges. There were like several different panels. Each had three different faculty members on it. And you had basically had to defend your essay in front of them. They would um, throw out a couple of critique points at you or um, potential counter-arguments, they'd ask you, like, you know, well, what could be some rebuttals against your arguments in your essay? And you'd have to basically say, well, I someone could probably argue this and this and this. However, 
and then you could have to explain why your paper was probably uh, taking the better position than some kind of argument that was proposed against it. So it was a bit nerve wracking to say the least. Like it wasn't, I, I don't want to say it was that difficult, but I mean, I poured a lot of effort into it because $7,500 a year of financial aid is a lot of money. Like you really don't think about it, but college is expensive. If you're not, if you don't have any kind of student loans to help you pay for your college, scholarship money takes a lot of that burden off of you. So I basically just tried my best at this to see if I could get it. I ended up getting it. I was one of the 15 out of the 250 selected for the scholarship, which worked out really nicely because with my, um, with the current housing I have, and since I don't have a meal plan, I could save a lot more money because buying groceries is way cheaper. It actually pays for pretty much the entirety of all my college expenses, except for maybe a little bit of books because books are stupidly expensive in college. Like I probably paid, uh, I paid I think seven hundred dollars last semester for my textbooks, and there was only like five of them. It's not like I bought like twenty different books. It was just five textbooks. Like they'll charge you upwards of two hundred dollars a book sometimes, depending on what class it's for and how in demand it is. It's just absurd the amount of money they make off of you at bookstores. So I paid for basically the majority of my college, which is also how I got into my car. You have probably heard that story before, so I won't go into that later, but. Um, another thing I recommend about college is, um, since textbooks are so expensive, if you're into saving money, which I'm pretty sure all of you are, cause you know, money's a good thing to have, um, you're going to want to buy your books off of some kind of third party site. Amazon is a good place to do this. They have some kind of college deal for universities. I'm not entirely sure how it works. I don't particularly care to use it, but basically I've found um, some friends of mine who have actually bought all of their textbooks off Amazon, uh, a couple of months before the semester started. And then usually what campuses will do is they'll do a textbook buyback where they'll actually, have, if you have a book of theirs that they want to buy back and resell it as a used book, they'll buy it back from you. Um, sometimes their buyback prices are high enough to where you can actually make money from selling your books that you bought off Amazon. Like I've had friends who've made upwards of $200 a semester just by selling, reselling books that they bought off Amazon back to the bookstore. So if you're going to buy any books for your, uh, for your university, if you haven't already pre-ordered them through the um, through the bookstore for your first semester, which is usually what they make you do for the first time, go ahead and buy them off of Amazon or eBay or some other third-party site because you definitely do not want to pay bookstore retail for any of the textbooks they have to offer there. And then a lot of times, university authors like um, professors at your university, the one you're going to, will actually have a part in who wrote the book. Sometimes they will actually sell their own authored books at the um, at the bookstore and require them for their courses, which I'm not technically sure if that's legitimate, but I would kind of venture to say that's a little bit of a shady practice. So what they do is, um, since they earn royalties on that, they will require you to buy that textbook, and uh, they don't sell that textbook for cheap. Basically, any kind of textbook is going to run you at least 50 bucks, if not more even used, which really sucks. So definitely buy your books third party. That'll save you a lot of money and time. Now, meal plans are a little bit different. Some universities will require you to have a meal plan your first year on campus. Usually it's if you live in a dorm, you have to have a meal plan. It's just part of the university deal because, you know, they like money and they want to make sure that you're all set and ready to go. So since I only lived in the dorms for one year, my, just my freshman year, I only had to have my meal plan for that year. And I kind of found when I was in college that my eating schedule shifted a little bit. I used to have three meals a day when I was in high school, just breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But since my classes kind of started a little bit later than they normally did in high school, I just found myself eating lunch and dinner, so I only had ten meals a week. And that was more than sufficient for me. Usually you'll find that you eat a little bit more per meal at college, just because stress kind of you know forces you to eat more in one sitting. You find yourself that you're not very hungry very much. So... You may want to consider your meal plan and how your diet's going, although don't underestimate too much because um, you can always change your meal plan later, but it would really suck if you underestimated the first time around and you just kind of starved for the first semester because once the semester starts, it's basically impossible to change your meal plan. So what I initially did was 12 meals a week. I found that that was way too much and I was just never using it. So I went down to 10 meals a week and that ended up being perfect for me. But now since I don't have a meal plan, I buy my own groceries. And I would absolutely recommend that you do that too because college food is very unhealthy and you can save so much money by buying groceries on your own. So as soon as you can dump that meal plan, dump it. Buy your own food. It'll save you a lot of time and stress and weight 
in the long run. So that was my whole spiel on college and how I picked my college. Hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this incredibly long episode. Thanks for tuning in again, guys. I'll have another one up tomorrow. See you later.